All right, I'm going to answer the question for you today on how to cook spinach. We have a special recipe which is simple but covers the primary principles, methods, and techniques for cooking spinach. Um, in this particular recipe, there's something that you're going to notice right away. Most of the time when we blanch vegetables in this vegetable class and on these DVDs for the vegetable class, is we plunge the carrots or the broccoli or the cauliflower into the boiling salted water and then we shock it in the ice water. In the case of the spinach, we pour the water onto the spinach and then pour the ice water on it directly. The reason we do that, and I'll demonstrate for, that for you in a second, is that the spinach overcooks sometimes in the time that it takes you to get it in and out of the water. So you don't want to spend even that much time because what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to cook the spinach about three quarters of the way and I recommend that over completely cooked spinach, uh, which the only time I would really recommend spinach 100% cooked is if you're going to make like pureed spinach maybe, okay? Or when you're doing a specific recipe that requires you to do that for some reason. And there's plenty of those out there too. But generally speaking for spinach for as a regular veg, I would recommend that you only cook it like three quarters of the way. So I'm going to get right on to the recipe and you can make this recipe with olive oil or butter or both together and it's very simple it can also be eaten hot or cold and in both cases it has garlic lemon salt pepper now either butter or olive oil interchangeable in both recipes hot or cold typically the cold one is kept with the olive oil the only time butter is used for the cold one is if you're going to make it and eat it immediately you would never make it with the butter and then put it in the refrigerator to bring it out and serve it cold because the butter would coagulate. Um, so what I got here is what we call cello spinach, which is short for cellophane wrapped, is which is what they refer to this as. And I bought this in the supermarket today. Now, there's about three kinds of spinach in the marketplace that you should be aware of. There's bushel spinach, which is, tends to be dirty. Not bad, but has, can have more dirt on it. Uh, where these pre-picked, pre-cleaned baby spinaches and cello spinaches are not dirty and don't require you to wash them all the time, okay? So back to the three kinds of spinach. You got bushel spinach, which is typically not picked and has heavy stems and is a little bit firmer of a spinach. And then there's medium-sized cello spinach, is what we have today. And then there's baby cello spinach, or just plain baby spinach. It's not necessarily in a bag. Um, I chose this one because this is the most average spinach that you'll find. But if you should happen to get a spinach that doesn't have the stems pre-picked like this, which these are the, still the tender part of the stem, but further on down here, they're not so tender, and these have been snipped, all of them. Now, so I'm going to pour the water onto the spinach first, and I'm going to demonstrate right now how this dish is made, and it is very quick, and it is very good. I got some boiling water right here, and I'm going to dump it right on the spinach. I'm going to move it around a little bit in that hot water. This is quick, and then now I'm going to hit it with the ice water immediately. And we're going to stop the cooking process. But it's cooked enough where you still have a little leafiness left to the spinach. And that is the, what I would call the advantage to cooking the spinach three quarters of the way. Now the reason, of course, that you're hitting it with the ice water or shocking it with ice water is in all cases to stop the cooking process. And when that happens and you do stop the cooking process, it preserves the color of the vegetable also, okay? Now this isn't ice cold, so I'm gonna put a little bit more ice water in here. I don't wanna put so much ice water in there, but I have ice cubes all over this thing that don't melt, because I wanna be able to pull the spinach out and wring it out without having ice cubes mixed in with it. So, it's cold now, and it's blanched. Now, I'm gonna take it out. put it in another bowl. You see how it's cooked, but it's still a little bit leafy? And I think that is the, uh, 
I, what it really boils down to is you have a little bit of texture left to the spinach that resembles the original texture of the raw spinach. And that's, um, I would call that an advantage when it comes to eating it. Okay, I got the spinach out of there and let's get rid of that. Okay. Now at this point right here, you can take your spinach and store it in the refrigerator if you want. Now let's say, I'm gonna put the towel on here and just suck up any excess water that I might have. Now you see how nice and green that is? But it's still a little bit leafy. Now you can even cook it less than this. Like here, for example, is a part of the spinach that's not even cooked. A little, just barely cooked. So I'm gonna cook a little bit more and that, that's, that's the way it should be. That's nice. Now, for the cold spinach, um, and I think that um, I'll just show you a little sample of how the cold spinach is made, and that is to just take some of the spinach, mix a little bit of lemon. Fresh squeezed lemon is absolutely recommended in this particular case versus any bottled lemon, because this dish needs the sharpness of the fresh lemon, simple as that. Uh, the other lemon doesn't have that vitality that a fresh lemon has. I'm gonna put a little bit of lemon here. I'm gonna put a pinch of raw garlic here. This is also the case where you can use the whole roasted garlic, mash it and put it right in here, or use it for garnish on top of the spinach. If Lewis would grab that uh, roasted garlic out of the oven for me, we'll probably be able to show you that. Now, I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil on here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna taste this to see how it is. Right there, you are looking at a finished spinach dish in terms of the seasoning part of it. This is nice, it needs a little bit of salt and a little teeny bit more garlic. And I'm gonna take it. Let's say you were serving it as a little side veg. You just put it on a little plate like that. And um, in this case, I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of tomato boudoise on there for some color. And we just hit it with a little pinch of olive oil like that, just extra if you feel like it, okay? There you go. There's a nice, cold, fresh spinach dish that um, people will just love. Now, the roasted garlic cloves, which are soft enough to eat, they're kind of mashable within my fingers, uh, I'm gonna use for the hot spinach dish. Now, the hot spinach version of this, I'm gonna make with butter. And let's say you were going to serve this spinach as a side veg with, at a dinner party at your house or on your regular daily dinner. Uh, for yourself or your family. Um, you can get the spinach cooked up to this point for up to one day ahead of time, not beyond that. Uh, it it's happens so quickly anyway in terms of how long it takes to do it. I don't recommend that you have to make it that far in advance because it does deteriorate in the refrigerator after you blanch it to some extent. One day, no problem. After that, um, it starts deteriorating. And when you do store it in the refrigerator, you store it on paper towels. So any liquid that's left in the spinach gets absorbed by the paper towels and the spinach does not sit in the water that drains from it because that will accelerate the deterioration. Remember, there's more bacteria in the water than there is in the air, okay? Now, I'm gonna take a little bit of melted whole butter and put it in a pan. Now, some people would call this sauteing the spinach and I would not call that because I would describe sauteing as cooking something quickly in hot fat until it's brown, typically. Uh, in this case, we're gonna butter the spinach in a pan with some butter. So I'm gonna take some of the spinach and throw it in the pan with the whole butter. Again, like I said, you can use butter and olive oil in tandem together in this recipe if you want. I prefer this one with just the butter or just the olive oil. And we're going to put a little bit of garlic in this one also. We're just going to heat the spinach up, barely. 
And we're going to give this spinach a little bit of lemon juice also. And a little bit of salt and pepper. Remember, I'm not interested in cooking this spinach right now. I'm just heating it up in the butter and seasoning it. It's already cooked. Just get it all mixed up like that. This is, I will tell you, of all the ways that I have served or eaten spinach, this simple way seems to be the most satisfying for most people. Just blanch, season with a little olive oil and butter, salt and pepper, and lemon juice. Now let me give this a taste. And we'll see what we got here. Now this seems so simple that one would say, why do you have to dedicate an entire lesson in the DVD to this? You need to understand how to handle spinach. Um, and it's so easy to overcook it, and it's so, it can be appreciated so much if it's cooked just right. This spinach needs a little more salt and a teeny bit more lemon. And it is good to go already. I don't even have to taste it. Now we'll put some of this on a plate. Depending on how fond your love for garlic might be, in this case you can take a little bit of garlic clove for garnish on this. Now if you were doing this on a larger platter, that would be particularly nice, you know? And then I'll put a little bit of the tomato brunoise on here. And that's a done deal right there also now. So um, there you go. There's a really nice way to do spinach and um, you'll enjoy this one no matter who you give it to. There's a couple of things that I might want to mention to you about this spinach that can bring it a little bit further along. One of the things that I like to do with this very recipe right here is add a little bit of minced bacon and bacon fat to it too. Splash of cream. You can make cream spinach out of this by adding a little bit of reduced cream to it. It doesn't have to be chopped and pureed to be cream spinach. Don't forget that. Um, so you enjoy this spinach recipe just the way it is or now know how to basically handle and cook the spinach and enjoy your own recipe with properly cooked spinach.